Well, sure, adding the right seasoning is important when it comes to how your food tastes, but food science also plays a big part in how the flavors are developed and it affects the foods that you eat every day. Here's something to chew on from our partners at Real Simple, the science of deliciousness when it comes to bread. We're here today to talk about the science of leavening agents, which are basically just substances that cause the release of gas in batters and therefore help your dough to rise. So there are three main types of leavening agents. The first is steam. There's also chemical leaveners, which are baking powder and baking soda. And the third is biological, which is what we know as yeast. On this week's episode of Something to Chew On, we're breaking down the science of how yeast helps you make perfectly fluffy bread, unlike this very dense piece here. Today, I'll be baking no-knead sandwich bread while walking you through the science of leavening. First ingredient is three and a half cups of bread flour. The essentials of bread dough are flour, water, and of course yeast. In our recipe, we start by stirring active dry yeast together with flour, milk, sugar, and melted butter. The combination of these three things yeast loves most, meaning food, moisture, and warmth, activates the yeast and feeds it, which invites fermentation. This means we're kicking off the proofing stage, which is necessary for leavened dough. Typically, kneading is an essential part of bread baking. It's what develops gluten in the dough, which is necessary for giving bread structure and a chewy, elastic texture. But this recipe's special in that it doesn't require you to knead the dough. That's because the yeast is tackling the task of developing gluten in our bread without us having to knead. So now that this is mixed, we are going to let it sit with a towel on top for 20 minutes before we add the salt. So we're gonna take this off, and now we add the salt. So we've waited to add the salt in order to give the sugar and the yeast time to activate, and salt could inhibit that. We'll form it into a nice ball, and then cover it in plastic wrap, and then we're gonna leave it overnight. By mixing together our ingredients and letting them sit around at room temperature for an extended period of time, the proteins get broken down so much that even the tiniest internal mechanical actions can develop gluten. Basically, during this long resting process, the yeast creates numerous air bubbles that are moving throughout the dough and are able to develop gluten without us having to knead. The effect is risen bread. We're gonna cover this with more plastic wrap and then let it sit for two more hours. All right, so we just let this proof for two hours, which means the yeast has had time to do its thing. And as you can see, this dough has risen really beautifully. So we're gonna take the plastic off and put it in the oven at 375 for about 45 minutes. Okay, so we have our beautifully golden brown loaf of bread. We just need to invert it here and we're gonna paint it with some butter on top. Without a leavening agent like yeast, your bread wouldn't rise, but properly using and understanding yeast makes for a soft, structured, homemade loaf. As you can see, in this loaf, we didn't give the yeast sufficient time to develop, which left it dense and tough. But in this bread, we gave the yeast plenty of time to develop both carbon dioxide and gluten to give it that soft, airy texture that we love. Well, for more great recipes, check out realsimple.com.